We're interrupting the string of Matt Clark Series 3 episodes to bring you a mail call video. So let's roll the titles and come back. Everybody, Anthony Dodge, Model Train Outsider, the Maryclin Outsider here, and I just got another delivery from my favorite shop in the world, Model Bond Shop Lippa. So let's put it over on the side table and see what I got today. All right, so not as big a box as recently, but still something very, very nice in here. So let's just cut it open real quick. There we go. All right. So, of course, I already know what's in here, but you all don't. So get the paper out of the way. And that's that. We will have to make some incision here. There we go. Does not want to come apart easily today. They really wrapped this one up tight. that off fairly easily. All right, so the first thing we have, we'll let the camera focus in. We have a group of uh, Deutsche Bahn uh, electric train drivers, so they actually won't go with what we got today, but uh, fill out some drivers for my ICE4 and such, but we got some more drivers. But obviously the big deal is this. So let's move this back out and show you what it is. Obviously it's from Roco. Alright, so I have here a box from one of my favorite companies, Roco. And this is a new locomotive I picked up. Uh, some who follow my channel know that uh, recently, a couple locos I had pre-ordered got canceled, so I took this one instead. And it is, and I'll show it up here in the case first, it is a Class 218 in a blue livery from Press. So let's take it out and give you just a quick look see here. I'll take off the foam protections. But this is a class 218 which was sold off by Deutsche Bahn to private companies and these are used both for um, high-speed traffic, freight, passenger, and local traffic, uh, especially you see this livery up in the Schleswig-Holstein area. So, let's put it on the uh, track and take a closer look at it. Okay, so here it is. It has not been run in yet, but we've got it here to take some looks at it. I do like this blue. It's a little different than my Czech blues. I have seen these in northern Germany. I don't know their extent around Germany. I also know that they sublet the, this model back to Germany, that they are private companies who sublet them back. And that even shows in one of the little, that even shows in one of the little inserts that you get where you can turn around and make it uh, say that it has been rented to or rented from Deutsche Bahn. You can put these little stickers right back on it 
and that gamitet an is rented. So on terms of the top, this is one of their midline level vehicles. It's not going to have the most. The fan does not work. You can look in closely and see that it is molded into the framing. So it is not an actual spinning frame. Higher metals, uh, higher models, excuse me. Higher models of that will have actual working fans. So for Roco, the very high quality look to it just not a lot of fancy detail to it but it is a workhorse locomotive you don't expect it to be too fancy so there it is it does not have a ton of functions again this is their mid-range model so of course of course you will get lights and operating sounds. Now this came with the generic Roco 3 setting. Let you hear the diesel fire up. Good sound, good sound. I did turn the volume up just a little bit. I felt it was a little too low, but I think that's a good sound to hear when it's actually running on the layout. But as I was saying, this particular uh, locomotive is a mid-range and it came preset to address 3 which is very common with Roco <clears throat> that their stuff for Miracle is preset to address 3 and as I've been going through and loading this into my central station 3 I did change its address and the basic functions have moved although some functions are not necessarily working where they're supposed to work I have not been able to locate all of them. It says it comes with 28 sound and light functions. I've only been able to activate nine right now. Obviously, I'd have to go in and mess with CV codes, which is not something I necessarily want to do. But uh, we'll get it there as needed. So what we're going to do is go ahead and let this guy run in, and then we will take a look and see how it handles everything else, including the incline. Okay, so I have run it in and I did weigh it and this came in at a fairly hefty 491 grams. So uh, definitely got some weight to it. Weight is not the only issue in pulling it. But what we wanna do is let's go ahead and take it around and see how it handles the incline without any stock on it. And uh, then I will run it on my Friday live stream best I can and give a final word on it. So, let's watch it run in. All right, so here it comes. It has a built-in build-up speed, so you don't even have to seem to set it. And it's going to pass the check. So here we come into the curve and get ready to head up the incline. And you can see the incline line right there, that little line right where it goes. It's going up the incline.
nice and smooth. Maybe a little bit of hesitation as it goes into the Delman Horse Station. And we will give it a little bit more speed and come back in a second. All right, it's coming up on its second pass. It's about 20 kilometers an hour faster than it was last time. Let's see if we can detect any hesitation there. None there, definitely none there. So if anything, clearly smoother on its second pass. Alright, so there you have it. My new Roco BR218 to go along with my last two Roco Vectron purchases. Uh, extremely smooth runner. Maybe it had a little hesitation at the very start of the incline on its first run, but definitely, especially when I kicked the uh, kilometers per hour up. And again, I'll have to go back and watch the video to see if there really was a hesitation or if it was my eyes playing with me because I'm watching through the camera. But right now, definitely considering it was one of their mid-range price locos and not their higher end. For example, the 218 that was canceled, which is basically the same shell, just painted in the German red. Uh, and maybe the same motor uh, was almost $100 more expensive. But it had many more functions, which means it was a higher end decoder. Um, and definitely had more functions in it. But this does have an MM or a MFX compatible decoder in it. It is not a DCC decoder per se. It is uh, listed as an MFX decoder. But it was not auto automatically read by my machine. I had to load the thing in at address 3 and then change the address on it later. But Definitely sharp enough. Again, not the greatest detail, but this is a mid-range. And it's also a 218, and 218s are not necessarily designed to be fancy outside the one two-tone uh, black and white Pico Merklin uh, special model, the Bus 218. But um, for exactly what it is, definitely great value for money for me. Again, we'll have to run it in. Time is the ultimate judge. This may look great now, and a year from now it'll be running crap. But it's out of the box performance. Uh, once again, shows that if not Merklin, Roco is one of the contenders for my second favorite company. They just never seem to let me down when I buy one of their locomotives or rolling stock. I think they, personally, my opinion is they are the best. Uh, compatibility with the Merklin system. Their AC products seem to just act like Merklin products on my Merklin track with my Merklin controller. They're just uh, from the Railjet to my two Vectrons to this. And I've had some good Picos as well. But And of course I had um, a Brava, which was awesome. And I think Brava works very well with uh, Merklin as well. But I have been buying a lot of Roco lately because they are a little uh, they definitely put out more product, and they tend to be a little cheaper than Merklin, but um, I'm not disappointed in what I've got, and now I have another 218. I still need a red one. Fortunately, Merklin and ESU are releasing red 218 sometime this year. The Merklin one, I think, is due in the fall. Probably means it'll show up right before Christmas or right after Christmas, but I'm hoping sooner rather than then. Um, and plus I'm going to be in Germany, so I'll get a chance to maybe shop around and see if some of the local shops have a Red 218 in AC format uh, on shelves, in which case I'll buy it there, especially if it's a Roco or a uh, Merklin from earlier releases. But we'll see. Anyhow, um, this has been a nice little interruption from all the Matt Clark stuff. It's a beautiful Loco. Uh, I really do like it, um, which is weird because I don't think the 218s are that 
good looking to begin with. I just want to, a couple of 218s because I've ridden plenty of stock that's been pulled by the 218s. And uh, this one I've actually seen. I don't think I've been uh, a passenger on this, but this works both freight and passenger. So uh, it is diesel. I don't think I demonstrated the sound, but it really does have good sound for the diesel. Like I said, I was still trying to find some of the functions. I think I found about eight of the supposed 22 basic functions it has, although I think the booklet says it has 28 uh, available functions including shutoffs, like just permanent light shutoff. And so those usually aren't on uh, the control system anyhow. But I'm babbling. So I'm going to say, as I always do, Avida Zane Chus and happy trains, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.